And how about the back? This is right. At the graduation day lunch, the overwhelming emotion is relief. Student relief that everyone has made it, more or less. Parental relief that three expensive years are at an end. No wonder everyone's looking pretty cheerful and looking forward to cold chicken salad, chocolate gatto, and a few kindly words from the fellows. Yes, if you do come back into residence here, and of course, you know, you automatically resume membership of Queen's if you, oh, if you come back, yes. then you'll be given a further scholarship. Oh, well. Oh, lovely. <laughs> think about getting, yes. I think you feel more at home here than anywhere, actually. I think you've quite lost the thought of going. <laughs> Life at Queen's starts with a photograph and ends with a photograph. There are plenty of other photographs in between, but these are the ones for framing and the mantelpiece. The places do still largely go to the well ex grammar schools if they're not still and the public school intake and there's a very poor record still for taking comprehensive people it seems that you know the glittering prizes are still going to the same old people Ladies, would you like to sit? I was at a comprehensive school and I hadn't really thought about going to university at all when I was in the fifth form it really sort of happened out, out of a careers interview when the woman just gave me the addresses of the Oxbridge registries as a normal procedure, I suppose. And so I sort of wrote off, got prospectuses, read them, became quite interested, and uh, decided to sort of go a bit further. Soon decided that Cambridge sounded better <laughs> than Oxford. The school were helpful, but not knowing really very much about it. They didn't really do very much. It was sort of a case of find out for yourself and uh, see how it goes. Right. So, can we have a few more feet together in the front row, please? Your own feet. Still now, shoulders back, keep your chins up, that's looking fine. A cabinet minister, perhaps? A TV personality? A Nobel Prize winner? The rest slipping away into the cities and shires, professional men and women, the backbone of society. The final weeks of a final term at Cambridge have a poignant, bittersweet quality. At no other time in life is the certainty of a paradise lost so inevitable. In these weeks, pretty women and pretty men in pretty surroundings reflect on their last weeks together, on what the experience of Cambridge has meant, and what faces them in the real world beyond. <laughs> but it is at this time of the year that Cambridge shows its most seductive face, deadening the pain of parting in a panoply of distractions. Industry and idleness that have run parallel all year meet head-on, as exams jostle with May balls, bumps on the river, music, drama and endless partying. Most people who come here have been at the very top of their schools and enjoyed you know being number one and initially it was a shock to come here and find lots of people who've been doing that and to find that things were tougher it was far more dependent on you as to what you did and no one was going to shepherd you through anything on the other hand as i say if if you want to do something then you can i like to do measure for measure yes um uh, which would basically at the moment of where i'm visiting would involve building a couple of things tires to shove lights on which would be scaffolding tires and uh, and this stage down in front of the lodge here, so the audience would be looking from you'd there. Ha you'd down. have the stage this side. Philip Almond is producing Queen's play. All summer, the long-suffering president has endured a non-stop regatta on the cam outside his back window. Now there's a full frontal threat. One of the problems that has arisen in the past is that the seating level has been so high that people, the audience, were actually able to look into our living room as they were. <laughs> Well, and I think probably that wouldn't be acceptable. No, that shouldn't be. The cam that runs like a main artery through Cambridge is now host to every college oarsman, male or female, stealing a precious hour at dawn from the day ahead in preparation for the May bumps. The thing that I've noticed in particular is that it's becoming much more studious, that people are working a lot harder at their academic work. 
and they have less time, really, for other things such as rowing. Because rowing takes an enormous amount of time up. And uh, if you're working very hard, it's very difficult to fit both things in. And there's a lot of pressure on people now to do well in the exams, to get good results, partly because of the unemployment situation as much as anything else. And so it's hard to persuade people to, to row six days a week. You're reading it, but the failure to want our freedom so passionately, that blighted Elms. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. But what she's saying is the failure to want the freedom... The last supervisions failure, before finals. Blighted Elms. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Yeah. It's hard to imagine that three years ago these confident undergraduates stood in nervous awe of their teachers. Well, presumably this mental malaise, emotional malaise that he's describing is itself the writing of poetry. I mean this yeah. summing, summoning up yes. of uh, these experiences isn't just sitting there thinking about them. I was surprised really. I thought it being incredibly difficult and I'd never be able to cope. Um, I think most people do really. But it starts off really very, very simple level, particularly in the sciences. Um, a lot of courses almost recap A level for people who haven't done that particular subject before. Educationally, I think I've learned no electronics while I've been here. So, uh, my lecturers won't be pleased to hear that. Uh, and that uh, the course was such that I built, I built one, one circle I built when I was 14 years old. We did it in lectures in my third year, in the final term. I thought it was a bit ridiculous. It's difficult sometimes to know just how well you have been taught or how badly. I often think that most of what I know, in fact, comes from home and from the fact that my parents have taken a lot of trouble to get me interested in certain things. And I remember, you know, from the age of eight that these were my interests rather than these were things that I picked up later. Though he had fallen by prompture of the blood... Auditions open to the whole university. ...that had he 20 heads to tender down on 20 bloody blocks, he had yielded them up before his sister should her body stoop to such a bored pollution. Then Isabel live chaste, and brother dies. Philip Almond goes for his leads first, the vile seducer Angelo and the upright Isabella. A little girl who's been in a nunnery and has suddenly come out, and the governor, God's deputy on earth, has told me that he wants to go to bed with me. What do I do? Okay, so can, can you take it back a bit and get a little less definite about it? Mm. That had he 20 heads to tender down on 20 bloody blocks, he'd yield them up before his sister should her body stoop to such a bored pollution. That's right. See, it's self-justification. You're telling yourself, this is right. This is what I've got to do, isn't it? Are you ready? Bro! Okay, let's try and keep this one in for. Right, two strokes this time. Right, the second one's a short jab. Make less thy body hence, and more thy grace. Ian Wright, the English fellow, is also hoping to get a part. The lead part of Angelo, if the truth be told, which is a trifle delicate for Philip Almond, as Ian Wright happens to be his director of studies. I am as I have been, approach me, and thou shalt be as thou wast the tutor and the feeder of my riots. All right, fine. Very, very good, great. Um, can we, I mean, there's nothing, you seem to know that very well, so there's not really much I can do about it. This um, can we go straight on to the, to the bit of hmm. uh, the comic bit you wanted to do? Elbow. Elbow. At Queen's, the old divisions are immemorially there. The Harties and Arties, Athens and Sparta, and the college resembles a beehive containing many cells. For sporty women at Queen's, it's the Valkyries. For men, it's the Kangaroos. The British passion for clubs and clubbiness seems to start here. Does that feel a lot better than before? Yeah. yeah. If you see that, and not worry about the other boat, we'll all be very well. OK. I think people have this show, like, like the um, kangaroos have this, this tremendous cocktail party at the beginning of the first year where they invite every single first year woman. But that's just a tradition. It doesn't frighten me at all, that sort of thing. That's, it's just a tradition, tradition and, and in fact it's rather fun. Um, I quite like being made a fuss of and if, if, they're, if they're making a fuss of me, I don't, I don't really mind. Um, but do you think you're, to some extent, looking out for a husband? Not at all. 
not at all. I'm looking to meet people, whether they're men or, or women. Um, no, I mean, one meets a husband and what, whatever one does. I mean, it just comes along. <laughs> no, you're not coming, you don't come up to university to meet. You, work, you, you come up to university to learn about yourself, to learn about your capabilities and to learn about other people. Not necessarily to find a husband at all. <laughs> but you might. You might. What we're going to do is we're going to play a silly game, basically to get to know each other and... Well, you won't get to know each other, but you will get to hate each other probably, all right? The play is cast and the players are getting in the mood. Everyone has to, has to wander around with their eyes, eyes closed. No one is allowed to cheat, all right? And what happens is that you're all, unless I tell you, you're all potatoes, okay? You're all potatoes. And you wander around in the dark and when you bump into somebody, if you're a potato, you say potato, and the other person says potato, and you're okay. But there's somebody wandering around called blood. obviously the only one I've got to compare it with. I'd been with people for eight years by the end, and we knew one another perfectly, and it was a very close circle. Here you're together for three lots of eight weeks, which is crazy hothouse and very intense. Um, the, the, I mean, the thing will be to see whether a large proportion of them last as friendships, which they will from school, and here I can't tell. Um, I can't tell yet. <laughs> All together, look. The Queen's first eight is in the first division, but only just. It's sixteenth in the table, bottom. Brothers, sisters, parents and girlfriends try hard to pretend that at the May bumps it's the sport that matters, and not that it's summer, that there's a picnic in the hamper, that it's jolly boating weather. The cam is too narrow for rowing abreast. So the boats are lined up behind one another in league order. When the cannon roars, each boat tries to overtake or bump the boat in front. When one boat bumps another, the cox of the defeated boat raises the right arm. That boat then drops a place in the league, and the victorious boat moves up. Did you check these wooden arms at Swan and Orlando? They have confessed you did. It's false. How? Know you where you are. Respect your great place. And let the devil be sometimes honoured for his burning throne. Where is the Duke? Tis he should hear us speak. Now, you've done one of the most difficult things in these bumping races, to come down one, then a row over three times, and still hold your place. And now you're going to get these people. You've got to keep it going. Off hard. Keep it going at 36 up the ditch. Attacking it all the way. Five, four, three, two, one. Larry Queen! Larry Queen! Larry Queen! That's 42 and you're placing them! Corey! Uh, I think it's a, it's a shame if, if the college does head solely towards the academic success and forgets the other activities that the college has traditionally been very good at. I mean, Queen's has always had a reputation for being good at many things. And it'd be a pity if we, if we just go for the academic goal. I mean, academic work's fine for learning how to work and motivate yourself and study as an individual, but teachers do nothing about working as a team, working with others, having to cooperate, motivate others, lead others, organize others. Um, 
and that's where group activities, whether it's sporting or drama or the music or whatever, are, I think very important. Queen's first eight has failed to recover the lost ground. They're relegated to the second division. Honour is upheld by the ladies' first four, with four bumps on four successive days. They're entitled to sport the Greenwood sprig in their bow, and each duly wins her all. The sport seems to have been more important to me than uh, this year, than academia, but it, it wasn't intended to be. And I, de I didn't look at myself when I, before I came up as a sporting sort of person at all, really. Um, I'm quite competitive, and I knew that. But in fact, at, at school, uh, I was an academic. Um, so it was quite a surprise to me to see that I was successful, because um, I, I became lady squash captain and got in the first boat and got my oar. And so it's, it's, yes, I suppose it has been a great influence on my life. <laughs> The Cox having suffered the fate of all Coxes, the crew turned for consolation to city accountant John Gordon, who rode for Queen's 20 years ago. Such is Gordon's devotion that for the last three weeks he's commuted every day from the banking quarter of the world to the banks of the Cam in order to coach the College 8. Well, about 10 years ago, when um, having supper after, after rowing with them, uh, someone very politely asked me what I did when I went down, and I said I qualified as a chartered accountant. Uh, a, a hoot went round the table, you know, in 1974, that was the most Monty Python-esque thing to do. Whereas in the last few years, I found people asking me, you know, very positively, how they should get into the city, where they should qualify as a lawyer, an accountant, or go straight into banking or broking. And I think there's a much more positive attitude now. They want to go on and do something, rather than uh, allowing their student life just to go on. <laughs> Can I first of all welcome you all to Davidson Pierce? It's very good of you to, to, to have committed yourselves so far, to have worked through our selection process so far and have spent a day, I know when you're very busy, in coming down. To when Philip Almond isn't studying English and producing Measure for Measure, he's looking for a job, a lucrative job in advertising. Uh, we've had many hundreds of applications this year, probably more than ever before, um, but you are the 20 odd best people that we've seen so far. We don't expect you to know about advertising. I'm sure you've been told that already. But what we'll be looking for is sort of analytic skills, objectivity, judgment, that kind of thing. It's just, just how interested you are in the whole subject and how you approach it. There's another one that's working on an established theme, is Say It With Flora, where the image of that man's body is so well established <laughs> that, uh, um, that you, you can get away with just saying something like Say It With Flora. I mean, it's, it's just keeping the product visible. Um, whereas the Mexican one, the people who you're interviewed by have a definite image of Cambridge and they have seen people from Cambridge before and the name just helps. And so they have, they have confidence in you and that gives you confidence. I suppose in the fact that you're at Cambridge there's an inherent snobbery because you're continually told that nowhere else is better, that you actually come to believe that you must therefore be better. In the sound and fury of the last weeks, it's possible to miss individual underlying tensions. You've had excess caffeine. I don't know anybody who's on Valium this year. Oh, no. Some of you are too. Polly. Polly. Oh, God. Are you kidding? That's all right, Anne. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's depressing to see you're getting an awful lot of accountants, and you certainly are. There's an awful lot of people who suddenly decide it's time to do law, I and mean, you need a job. It's quite obvious. I'm lucky in not having been pressurised by my parents to get a job, and they say, well, you know, it's nothing could be worse than doing something you don't like for 40 years. <laughs> I came up with the idea of trying to get into the Foreign Office, but I was very put off by the competition um, because you get so many people who seem to be so much more suited to it because of the way they, they talk, the way they can communicate with people. Um, and I don't know whether I'd be any good at it, but I think I'm going to try the Civil Service exam anyway because I think it's worth a try. I think, I mean, if nobody tries, nobody ever gets into it. At the 
the moment, I feel I'd rather do jobs which are not career structured, but are going to be interesting. And if they're not interesting, I'm going to get money from them, and then I'm going to go and do something interesting, and then I'm going to go and work again. Um, I think that'll probably change. I mean, by the time I start thinking I need a pension when I retire, then I dare say I will want to join uh, some career. <laughs> The bump supper and yet another photograph. Okay, everybody looking this way, please. Just as well that it's taken before when they're looking spruce rather than after when they're not. No trouble for a change? No trouble. So I wasn't here last year, but it's going very well anyway. Very well behaved. And the one earlier on as well, the, the lamp, lamp bumps. Yeah, they've been very good, very good this year. Makes a change from last year. And that's good. This is really good. If it's good, they won't throw. Really, really good. One of the guest speakers is another rowing coach, John Chaplin, to whom a funny thing happened on the way to the towpath. Anyway, um, women do have their place in things in this <laughs> towpath. <laughs> That's an ambiguous thing. Yes. Well, as a matter, matter of fact, I was, I, I, a fellow got in my way on the towpath this afternoon because he was locked in a sort of really fervent embrace uh, with the lady of his choice. And so I gave him a smart tap on the backside and I said... Oh. Are we solely concerned with restocking the ivory towers of academia. <laughs> or are we hoping to have within our membership those young men and women who will in future times go out and provide the leadership in all walks of life which this sad world so evidently needs. And with you, ladies and gentlemen, so wonderfully displayed, ladies and gentlemen, the club. Oh. Is it fanciful, or would some learned professor in ancient custom see in the pale dawn of a May ball relics of something very old? Echoes of a pagan spring festival, perhaps, or a fertility rite? Could it be a rejuvenation ritual, or simply a yearning for lost youth? People come to Cambridge because they think they're going to have the bride's head image. They come here and they can find sufficient people to create a little world around themselves where there will be a bright image. But there's no necessary reason for it being that way. And very often, those aren't, you know, as, as in bright in itself, they're not lords and earls and goodness knows what. They're people who want to come up and want to live out a nice media image as much as they possibly can. 
I think it really, it's gone, but people try and recreate it, perhaps for some reason. I mean, come now, May Week, um, you know, lots of garden parties, May balls, which really don't belong <laughs> to the 20th century, but uh, they're very enjoyable. And, and I think people, I mean, I should be involved myself. I don't really come from the sort of background where that sort of thing's ever happened to me before, but I enjoy it and uh, don't mind doing it. I mean, it's something which is going to take a lot to change <laughs> because every, everyone, I mean, apart from the boat race and rugby matches, that is the standard image of Cambridge. And the fact that it's basically an academic institution and has been so for the last 700 years seems to pass most people by, which is a shame. But there's mischief afoot at Queen's, the ancient contempt of oarsmen for actors, hearties for arties. It was just sort of a spontaneous thing. We saw all of this furniture around, and uh, it was about three in the morning, and we decided to uh, move it about the college, which seems like an absolutely asinine thing to do in retrospect. But uh, uh, when it's the uh, last time you'll be together as a team, it's the sort of thing that you, uh, you want to do. So we, uh, we moved out all of the, uh, the furniture out of that room onto the... Uh, top of the cloister there, which uh, gave some people some amusement, I think, for a few hours and didn't do any harm, so I think that's all right. Uh, they told me this morning that doing things like this was what Cambridge was about. I was told this by an American, uh, by an American and someone who'd been at Warwick University and is now a graduate here, and I rather resent that. I think that they have, if I dare say it, the media image of Cambridge, which is a playground where nothing serious goes on, and... Uh, Anybody who spends four days trying to put on something like a play must therefore be ripe for a few jokes. I think one of the things about Cambridge, which uh, you don't find at U.S. universities quite so much, is that it's, a, it's uh, very dominated by cliques. And, uh, you know, you're in one organization or in another, and you sort of, uh, uh, you have to be part of the team one way or the other, or you're not part of anything. The first night. Outside the dressing room, the set of Measure for Measure looks again like Renaissance Vienna and not at all like a kitchen sink drama. You just woken up? <laughs> no, I mean, on the, on the look it. stage. <laughs> no, I haven't. I was a very alive camp at the start. Yes, it's fine. Taste was good. There are two major sections, well, three. The first scene, William, can go a little bit quicker. The Queen's Dramatic Society is called the Bats because bats flit around at dusk in Cloister Court where the plays are usually held. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Where are you? The story about Claudio's head swapping the prisoners, Angelo still sending that instruction in, has got to come over clearly. That's really the low point. <laughs> Worthy prince, you bid me seek redemption of the devil. To hear me yourself, for that which I must speak must either punish me, not being believed, or wring redress from you. Hear me. Oh, hear me, My hear! My lord, her wits, I fear me, are not firm. Where else can an audience watch Shakespeare performed against a backdrop contemporary with the playwright? And where else can a student cast nurse some realistic hope that somewhere in the audience sits a theatre director or impresario combing Oxbridge for new talent? We will know his purposes. What? And just be not so hot. The Duke dare no more stretch this finger of mine than he dare rack his own. And do you remember what you said of the Duke? Most constantly so. Oh, do you so? <laughs> and is the Duke then a fool and a fleshmonger and a coward, as you then reported him to be? Sir, you must change persons with me ere you make that my report. You indeed spoke so of him, and much more, much worse. Oh, thou damned villain. Did Lots of very, very famous directors, actors, actresses have been to Cambridge. Therefore, people have this fantastic image of Cambridge drama. Very little of it is any good at all. So the media image can work in very many ways and people can be very impressed by something at Cambridge, in Cambridge drama um, from the outside simply because it's got the name Cambridge, which isn't, doesn't necessarily mean anything particularly good. So bring us to our palace, where we'll show 
What's yet behind this meat, you all should know. There isn't as much talent as there are opportunities, which means an awful lot of not very good productions and not very good actors and talent spread thinly and not very good directors. I mean, I'm not a good director. I've directed three times and I'm competent by now, but I've probably spent £1,500 in doing that three times and I shouldn't have had the chance to, really. <laughs> John got a two one as well. Two, 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 one. two one. The first. Really? John Long That's got a two one. Steve <laughs> Brown got a two one. I could, you really not want me to tell you? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yes, I knew it was top of cinema. And you got your ticket. There are two queens two oneers only. Which is yeah. Carly. Yeah. In our year, only two two well, ones from Queens, Steve Jones and Carlid. Everybody else got two twos, apart from myself, Claire Ormrod, and David Ruffley, who got third. Claire Ormrod got third. What did Ruffley yeah, get? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's incredible. What did yeah. Ruffley get? Those yeah. are very bad results. David? Andy Hack got two two. Bruce two one. I can't remember yeah. 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 if there is anybody else. That's it. It's in the Cambridge. Good. Fine. I don't know. <laughs> And that was that, all over bar graduation. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm sure you will agree that there is a lamentable custom on these occasions that the president should say a few words. Uh, on the other hand, from the president's point of view, uh, this is an opportunity not to be missed. It makes me feel very, very old to leave here. I feel very, very... Um, unhappy about leaving but at the same time I couldn't stand another three years of research or just another year of anything I just want I've had my time I want to get out graduation day belongs to the graduands and to Queen's prelector Dr. Diggle who will present them to the vice chancellor at degree taking Presento vobis hos veros, I present to you these men, or, as the case may be, if the line is constituted of both men and women, hos veros et has mulieres. <laughs> or, as equally the case may be, if the line is constituted of an unequal number of men and women, <laughs> hos veros et hank mulierem, or <laughs> has mulieres et hunk virum. <laughs> So you see, the prelector has to have not only a nimble mind, but also a firm command of Latin syntax. I, I'm not sure that it really prepares you for the world. It makes you look at yourself. It makes you understand yourself, and it, makes, it shows you your, your faults, and it shows you what you're good at. And it also shows you how to, how to deal with people. But the trouble is that it's such a, an enclosed in society that it really only teaches you how to deal with people that you're, you meet here, which are a very small proportion of the population. The old main gate is opened only once a year for the procession of graduands to the Senate House. Right, ladies and gentlemen, shall we proceed to the house? Pink hoods for Masters of Law, white fur for Bachelors of Arts. There are 19 firsts, 64 two ones, 35 two twos, and 11 one prefers not to talk about. It's been a goodish year. And academically, Queen's is still in the top five colleges for the fifth year running. One thing Cambridge has taught me, apart from this, it's maybe more cynical about life, and that I've seen, being in Cambridge, who's going to run the country. Um, 
the gov who are going to be the governing classes of the future. And it's, it's very, very worrying, and it's why Britain is like it is. I'm thinking that Japan has got engineers, not, not, I don't mean me in particular, but engineers um, running companies and in power, and where the, pe the people here will go into the managerial jobs and management training schemes knowing nothing about science. I, sp I suppose it's the, u the universities here to actually promote them. I think it's Oxford and Cambridge's job to provide these classes, but even so, it, you can see why the, why the country's in the state it is. Well done. 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 Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yours. Yeah. Oh. Shake her hand. Look at Gina's nightmare. It really is. What did John Green say to you when he came out? Hey, well, well done. done. Well 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 done.